Hello again. Now, the future of entrepreneurship education will take center stage at the Tswana University of Technology's Vice Chancellor Prestigious Research and Innovation Series. Now, Dr. Helen McGurk from the Munster Technological University in Ireland is going to address that gathering next Wednesday. But let's get more on this uh, seminar, on this lecture. I was joined by TUT Vice Chancellor himself, Professor Diniko Maduleka. Prof, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Thank you very much uh, for your time. I guess we all know, as we've heard time and time and again, about we need entrepreneurs. We need small and medium businesses because they are the ones who are going to really uh, provide that drive for our economic growth and uh, be employers. And they are still I I employers. Why have you decided to do this at uh, this time? at your university before we talk about what is going to be happening next week well it's part of our mandate uh, Braden, as a university of technology to really give focus um, to entrepreneurship and uh, given the situation in our country where there's high unemployment rate and where you have many young people being affected uh, by unemployment. It is really, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship are really the salvation um, that this country needs. We are not going to get out of the job and unemployment situation until and unless we produce young people who can find a job if there is one to find but more importantly, create and invent jobs for themselves uh, to start with and hopefully invent jobs for other people as well. Yeah, this, is, this is our philosophy that we, we, we are trying to push. And that's why we've gone halfway around the world to look for an expert to come and talk to us about that. Someone who has not only done the theory, but has actually been working with industry and uh, with students uh, to encourage uh, entrepreneurship so she knows what works and what doesn't work. Dr. Maguek, whom you referred to earlier. Yeah, I guess that's a critical part. Theory is one thing, practice is another. For an entrepreneur, if you're able to join the two and talk about them and show them the way and teach or lecture about it, it's going to be very useful. No, no certainly. Um, entrepreneurship is, is, is about combining ideas with um, needs, combining uh, theory with practice, and responding to real problems. Because no successful entrepreneur has ever come out of responding to imaginary problems. And so uh, that's why it's a very important um, thing that you just said now, because entrepreneurship will not be taught uh, theoretically, it, it needs to be taught in collaboration between universities and industry, between universities and businesses, between universities and government. Now, Dr. Maguire, that is her specialty. That's what she has been doing for a long, long time. She knows when and how uh, startups will work and which ones will not work which entrepreneurship ideas are likely to take off and which ones are not. And that's what we are going to, to, to talk about uh, and to listen to her expound at this lecture. Yeah, I mean, having this lecture, uh, joining the practical and the, and the theory is going to be very good. Uh, uh, Prof, is this a first for you? I'm not aware if you've done it before. I might have missed it. And if, it's, if it is a first, what do you hope will come out of this going forward? Because when you answered the first question I put to you a short while ago, you did highlight the importance of entrepreneurship and how much we need it in the country. So this is a prestigious vice chancellor's lecture we do it every year we we look for for experts in innovation and technology for ir ai um basically in the areas that are close to the mandate of an institution such as the Tswane university of technology so we have uh, at least one such annual lecture some years when we are lucky we do too. So it's not the first. It's not the first also because as the investor of technology, our role is to produce technicians, technologists, 
and to some extent artisans. It's not our role merely to produce um, graduates who can speak uh, big English. Of course, we also produce PhDs in engineering, ICT, and related fields. So this is a prestigious lecture. We have it once a year at least, and if we are lucky, we do it twice a year. And that's why we look for the very best in the world to come and deliver it. The other side of this, besides you creating this opportunity for students, is whether or not they have the appetite for it. Because, Prof, we always hear that not every one of us can be an entrepreneur. What are you seeing among your students' community? Are they keen on such a lecture? Are they grabbing this opportunity and seeing value in it? You know, one of the most exciting things that are happening now is that there is now a synergy that is developing between entrepreneurship, uh, 4 IR, and artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and all related. So it's not entrepreneurship in the traditional sense of the word that we are seeing. We're seeing innovation coming to the table and strengthening um, entrepreneurs. I don't know that uh, it is true that some people are not born to be entrepreneurs, because if you are not born to be an entrepreneur, you wouldn't have a job and uh, you would starve to death. So there is something that we all have, but clearly we need guidance. We need skills. We need to, to understand the context in which we live. And that's why it's important for universities of technology and other universities in general to provide the skills to young people uh, that are necessary for them to be able, first off, to find jobs, as I said earlier, but also to invent jobs, even to invent jobs that may not yet exist now. Because this 4IR revolution that is going on is churning out a whole lot of jobs that we never dreamt would be would, would, would be available. So more than just study to become a nurse or a teacher or a, a doctor, we have to think about those uh, new uh, jobs that are developing around AI and around the 4IR. And, and, and that's why the combination of those two and entrepreneurship becomes very, very important. Yeah, you've mentioned two aspects. You've mentioned getting a job out of this process, hopefully, or creating jobs or inventing new jobs uh, as well. On the, on the getting a job, securing jobs side, uh, are, you, are you enabling the students to take up the subjects or grapple with the subjects that the market or are in demand in the marketplace? Because sometimes we hear that we've got many graduates sitting at home, prof, who've got degrees but got no jobs. Is this process you at TUT are embarking on, this particular program, for example, around entrepreneurship, going to assist in making sure that they do secure jobs? Certainly. One of the things that we do at the Tswane University of Technology, and I think every University of Technology, including Munster, where Dr. Maguek comes from, is that we don't teach students in isolation from industry. So as universities of technology, we are something of a bridge between industry and the academia. So work integrated learning is crucial. It's not an optional extra for us. Students have to be integrated in some workspace as part and parcel of their training. Industry is invited to come and, uh, and be at university. We give them space so that universities, are, I mean, uh, students are able to interact with them as part and parcel of their training. When we write our curriculum, we invite industry. We've got these advisory boards consisting of um, members of industry, uh, CEOs, uh, COOs, and others who sit with our lecturers and say, what is the latest? What do students who want to become dental technologists, what do they need to, to know, uh, for example? What is the latest um, cutting edge um, uh, technologies in this area, and so on. So we, we, we don't wait until students graduate before we talk about um, em, em, employability. And, and so on average, the University of Technology student 
finds a job before they finish what they are studying for. Um, unlike perhaps a student in a traditional, conventional university. Yeah, the world of work is changing fast, Prof, as you know. We are not where we were, and even the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated uh, certain aspects of 4IR that you have mentioned. Is the industry playing ball with the likes of TUT? Are they really coming to the party to make sure that in this fast-changing uh, world of, of work, uh, your students are not led astray and end up not securing much-needed employment? Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's a famous author, you know, who um, writes on the 4IR, um, uh, uh, Yuval Harari, Noah Yuval Harari. He says we should be teaching our young people that when they grow up, they will not find a job. And what he means by that, they will not find the job that they dreamt about. You know how you ask youngsters and they say, I want to be a policeman. I want to be a radiographer when I grow up. And he says those jobs are changing. So we have to be ready to find that job that we don't know, we don't even know. And okay. I think that industry is actually uh, amazing in the way in which they are working with us, both in the advisory boards for uh, particular uh, subjects and also in terms of uh, providing space for our students to do work integrated learning. And that is built into their qualifications. In fact, you can't get a qualification until and mm. unless you have been uh, supervised in an industry setting. So we have been finding uh, them to be very cooperative. Of course, there's always room for more and better collaboration than we are yeah. getting. But we, we can't, for the moment, complain. Same goes with government. Um, government has been uh, also a, a good partner in helping us produce a generation of young students who will not go looking for jobs, but will invent them or jobs will look for them. Okay, finally, Prof, as we conclude very briefly, you just tell our viewers, when is this lecture by Dr. Helen McGuirk from the Munster Technological University in Ireland at TUT and uh, who can attend it? It's on the 27th of September. Um, we invite anyone who can and who cares, please, uh, you can come and attend this lecture. Um, of course, the TUT community, especially our students, are the guests of honor. What time? Because it is ultimately about them. Um, I think it starts at 10 in the morning at the Dinokeng okay. building. It used to be called Building 21 at TUT. Okay, that's next week, Wednesday, the 27th of September, 10 in the morning. Thank you very much, Professor Tiniko Maluleke, the Vice-Chancellor of the Tswane University of Technology.